All right. Welcome to the NCAA March Madness post-game press conference featuring the University of Michigan here at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. We are going to get started here. I would remind the media, if you do have a question, please raise the hand using the raise hand feature in the Zoom. And we will call on you and ask that you identify yourself and your affiliation when called upon. And we would also ask that you please limit your questions to just one initially. First up, we have joining us Franz Wagner, and we are going to go to our first question from Ted Dutkin. Ted, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Ted is with the Michigan Daily. Um, hey, Franz, you guys had 50 points in the paint tonight. Can you talk about how you were able to get opportunities inside as well as set up your teammates? Yeah, I mean, we knew coming in that they, would go, they were going to switch uh, a lot of ball screens and uh, basically everything. So um, we tried to move the ball. I think a lot of times people get in trouble um, just holding ball and dribbling the whole time. Um, so I think we moved the ball pretty well and then um, attack closeouts. Um, yeah, and I think getting the ball inside, outside, uh, and moving people on defense, uh, I think that's how we got open and uh, got able to, to drive them and um, then make plays from there. Next, we have Andrew Kahn with the Ann Arbor News. Andrew, if you could please unmute and ask your question, that would be great. All right, thank you. Hi, Franz. Uh, if you could give some insight into the preparation for this game, you know, what, what coaches told you, kind of film study. It just seemed like there were some things that maybe Florida State might have an advantage in that just were not the case at all tonight. I mean, uh, I think everybody knows. I think they're like the tallest team in the country, so uh, mm -hmm. we know that they press a lot, so that's one thing we um, – we kind of went over and practiced a lot. And then, like, like I mentioned earlier, the, the switching and um, how we can attack those, those closeouts. And, um, yeah, look at, look at some weaknesses that they have. And um, on film, I, th I think, um, you know, like we always do, we analyze what the other team does and then um, try to look how we can exploit it. And, um, I mean, the scout team did a great job again. I think the coaches had a good game plan. And um, I know everybody that played watched film like they always do. And then... Um, yeah, when, when they, we also talked about how, what to do when, when they read the post, uh, when they front the post and stuff like that. Uh, I think that's, that's something we've seen all season with Hunter uh, being so good down there. So uh, those were probably the, the main things we, we talked about. Thank you. Our next question goes to Teo Mackey with umhoops.com. Teo, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, Franz, just after the last, I guess, you know, year of not having the tournament last year, how rewarding is it now to, to be in this position after the performance you did today um, to get, you know, closer to your ultimate goal? Yeah, I think it makes it that much cooler. Um, I mean, like like every team in, in America, I think, or on, in the world, I mean, this year was tough with, with COVID and having to having to test every day and obviously the last last year being, being cut short. So, um, I mean, we wanted it that much more because of that, I think. Um, but, you know, you got to give credit to all the teams that, that made it as far. I think um, that itself is a, is a great accomplishment to, uh, to stay healthy and uh, keep testing negative and stuff like that. And um, I think this year has been extremely hard on everybody, especially mentally. Um, but like I said, I think that's, that makes it that much, that much cooler to, to now be in the Elite Eight. Next up, I have Bob Wojnarowski. Bob is with the Detroit News. Bob, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, Franz, it seemed like did you make a concerted effort to attack more, uh, attack the basket, even uh, dishing out as well? And with this team right now, it doesn't seem like we know who's going to lead the way on any given day. It can come from anybody at any different time. Is that kind of the secret sauce to you guys right now? I think it's been all season, to be honest. I mean, uh, obviously without Isaiah, we have uh, – uh, another weapon that, that's not out there, but uh, I think we've seen all season that uh, we have multiple guys that can score a lot of points um, that are great shooters from the outside and, and are a threat offensively. Um, I mean, like for myself, I think um, I always try to attack the basket, basket be aggressive. Um, but like I said, I think um, all that only happens when we move the ball mm -hmm. and um, don't dribble too much, and uh, that's when really everything opens up. Our next question comes from Brendan Quinn. Brendan is with The Athletic. Brendan, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Hey, Franz, I uh, know you have experience playing with older teams based on your 
pro experience uh, back home. And I, I just wonder if um, you can kind of explain what it's, what it's like when there's older groups like that. And, and if this team's kind of collective age and experience is, is showing itself um, in this, in this tournament run and navigating Isaiah's injury. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, with experience, I think um, there also comes confidence to kind of adjust to, to new situations. So I think with B. Johns, you can see that, that um, I mean, from the first game, really the Ohio State game, I think um, he played really well there and um, hasn't stopped since. So, um, I mean, but that's kind of been our identity all year, that next man up mentality and um, being confident out there, um, no matter what your role is. Um, and I think being an older team, I think that shows um, in, in those games when, when you maybe you give up a run or something like that and then you, you find a way to, to score a couple easy ones or get a couple important stops uh, to then uh, make a run of your own. I think um, that mental toughness, I think, is, is getting challenged this, this tournament especially, uh, but it has been all season. Next up, we have a question from Devin with Wolverine Sports. Devin, if you could please provide your full name and ask your question. Thank you. Devin Trevetti, Wolverine Sports TV. Hey, Franz, talk about how you had five assists and how are you, how are you guys were able to move the ball so well against such a big team like FSU, 19 assists versus just 10 for FSU. How are you guys able to move the ball against such a big team? Um, I mean, I'd like to give the coaching staff some credit. I think we have, we have some good plays that really put us in good positions um, out there. And then, um, I mean, like I said, we, we basically knew how they were going to play us all game. Um, with fronting the post and, and switching everything. So um, we kind of knew what to expect and, and did that in practice. Um, and then I think we did a really good job, like I said, of um, not allowing them to, to speed us up and just dribble um, against the switches. So uh, I think that that's how we got moving and um, got them to move and, and to adjust to us. And um, then we attacked their closeouts. And that's really when um, when they pressure so much and we can attack the paint. That's really how I got my assist, I think, today. and. Um, yeah, I think that's when good things happen for us. Thank you. Next next question comes from Orion Fang with the Detroit Free Press. Orion, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Hey, hey Franz, I was wondering between the, the final seconds of the LSU game and tonight's game, what, what impressed you the most about Juwan's coaching and, and anything he taught you guys this past week? Um, I mean, just uh, the way he, he um, can lock in on every single game. I mean, it's really easy to lock out um, during this week where you're just in the hotel and um, I think it finds a good balance of making sure that we, we relax but once the game starts we, we're all ready to go and um, then I think the confidence part of it um, before basically every game he, he tells everybody to uh, to shoot even if we if we missed the last one and um, I think you can see that out there on the court that people are really um, confident out there and um, just confident and comfortable uh, within their within their role out there. All right, our next question this evening comes from John Titel. John is with Hoops HD. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. I just checked the Boston Celtics schedule. They're off Tuesday. Any chance your brother's going to show up? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to text him or call him later. Um, I don't know how, uh, how much time he has. He, he probably has some things to figure out with being traded and being in a new city and stuff like that. So, um I don't know yet. <laughs> All right. Our next question comes from Steve Kornacki. Steve, if you could please identify your affiliation, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, Franz, this is Steve Kornacki from the Kornacki Wolverine Report. It, it, you know, you, you mentioned that uh, Brandon has stepped up, you know, right from the beginning when, when, he, when, when he was starting in Isaiah's place, and yet he has a, a much different game from Isaiah's. Um, it, it is is – is it at this point where you guys are now feeling totally comfortable with with Brandon in the starting lineup in terms of knowing where he wants the ball, knowing where he knowing where you want to get the ball and, and how you work on rebounds and double teams? Um, I mean, yeah, he's a different player, but um, we've been confident with Brandon at the four and starting at the four for us since since that first game. Um, we had we've been in this position before last year when when Isaiah got hurt a couple times and. Um, there, I mean, I, I think everybody remembers the Rutgers game um, where he stepped up big time. And um, I mean, he's so talented. We always tell him that um, 
he can really be the best player out there every time he steps on the court. So um, we, have, we have huge confidence in Brandon. Uh, I think he does too. And um, I mean, you can see he, he played a stellar game today. Um, got some key offensive rebounds. Um, and those little things, I think, are, are very important when, when you try to win the championship. Thanks, Ross. Franz, just two more questions. Next, we're going to turn to Jared Greenspan. Jared, if you could please identify your affiliation, that would be helpful. Thank you. Hey, Franz. Yeah, um, Jared Greenspan from the Michigan Daily. Um, you know, on paper, this seemed like a difficult matchup for, for Mike against Florida State's height. Uh, how would you evaluate his performance today and his ability to bounce back from last game? Um, I mean, I think Mike is so important out there uh, every single game for us. Um, he does so many good things offensively, um, just reading the game, um, putting every player in their best position out there. Um, so he deserves more credit for that, I think, um, even when his own stats maybe don't show that. But um, I think, I mean, we talked about it actually before the game. Uh, He's been counted out his whole life, so um, this is nothing new for him. And uh, I think he showed um, that chip on his shoulder is, is always there. And uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm very confident with, with him at the point guard uh, with, with every matchup that we have. All right, our last question goes to Justin Rose. Justin, if you could please identify your affiliation, that would be great. Thank you. Hey, Franz, Justin Rose, WXYZ TV in Detroit. Um, four Elite Eights for Michigan since 2013. Pretty safe to say you guys are a basketball school these days, isn't it? Um, I mean, the basketball club uh, has done a good job, a great job, obviously, these past couple of years, but uh, I'm very confident in the football team. Uh, it's going to surprise a lot of people next year. And, um, I mean, I don't want to forget all the other sports, too. Um, that have gone through these struggles that, that we've had um, and don't get the same attention. So um, I think sports and general athletic, athletic department at Michigan, um, you can see how, how we make uh, steps forward every single year, and um, that makes me really proud. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you, Franz, for your time tonight. Welcome to the Elite Eight. Thank you. Thank We're you. going to be joined momentarily by Coach Jawan Howard. Please use this time to raise your hand if you have questions for the coach, and we'll get started momentarily. Thank you very much. Good evening. Welcome to the podium here at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. We have joining us Coach Jawan Howard from the University of Michigan, and we're going to start with an opening statement. Coach? Well, I just want to say this, that I'm so proud of our team on how they competed from start to finish. Um, give a lot of credit to Florida State, a well-coached team, a coach who I, I know very well, I have a ton of respect for. Um, he runs an excellent program, developed young men, 
and I've been one of the recipients of uh, the, some of the development learning from Coach Ham. So um, it was a hard-fought victory, uh, but now it's just one game at a time. We've got to keep competing, which our guys are looking forward to the next matchup. All right, thanks, Coach. We're going to turn to our first question from Teo Mackey. Teo is with umhoops.com. Yeah, Juwan, uh, Franz obviously was key tonight on both ends of the floor. What were some things that he did from your perspective uh, in this game uh, that he wouldn't have been able to do a year ago? Well, Franz has developed, um, and he has gotten better each and every year, that, and he's only been here for two years. Um, it's been a joy to coach, and I know, you know my staff will agree. Um, a guy that has a high IQ, high ceiling, loves basketball, a grinder, and today the impact that he has on the game, just like his teammates, was extremely effective with what he had, with having the ball in his hands and also being on the defensive end. All right, our next question this evening comes from Brendan Quinn with The Athletic. Brendan? Hey, Juwan. Um, when it comes to dealing with this group, you know, just uh, the amount of guys that you have who are, you know, 22, 23, like it's an older team. And I just wonder for you, um, being able to execute a game plan or just being able to communicate things like that. Just, uh, just what it's like being able to coach a team that kind of has that as a commodity that a lot of other groups don't have. Well, I just wanted to correct you. Um, you know, we have Hunter Dickinson and Franz Wagner who are very young. Um, and those two guys are, you know, a starting lineup and um, it's been, you know, great to, you know, to coach all the guys, whether it's, you know, upperclassmen or uh, underclassmen. Um, our two younger guys are, has a high IQ, and um, it's been, you know, beautiful just to learn from them uh, just as much as our seniors. Uh, but, you know, we're grinding, man, and we're doing it collectively, and it's beautiful just to see the development that's happening uh, before our eyes. Our next question comes from Ted Gutkin with, he is with the Michigan Daily. Ted? Hey, Juwan. You guys had 11 offensive rebounds and 17 second chance points. Can you talk about the work you guys were able to do on the offensive class tonight? Well, yes. Uh, it was based on effort, energy, and toughness. You know, our guys came with the mindset. Uh, we talked about it, you know, leading up to the game. Uh, we showed it on film. Uh, we also talked about it before the game, about we have to attack the offensive glass. Uh, we can't sit back on our heels and uh, leave it untouched. Um, shot goes up, let's go. Uh, you have the habits of you know, transition defense. If the numbers advantage, uh, we have two guys that's going to be back. That's going to, of course, uh, communicate and try to stop a layup. I just love the effort that our guys brought and the energy and the grit. Next up, we have Andrew Kahn with MLive.com. Andrew, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Hi, Juwan. Uh, Fran spoke about the confidence you and the coaches, you know, give the players. I, I guess, can you speak to the balance of, you know, making sure your players are aware of what the opponent does well while still giving your players confidence that they can they can handle it, you know? Well, uh, why not give them confidence? Uh, that's what we're here for, to empower uh, these young men who's put in a lot of hard work and effort uh, each and every day in practice, games, um, if you break their confidence, then they will not be able to go out there and compete at a high level. You know, the trust is earned not only just from the players, but also coaches. You know, we have to earn their trust. And so with all the work that we put in practice, you know, we see what our guys provide from a skill level, uh, also being neck up, and then also the hard work they bring in with the energy and effort. So the trust and the belief is there uh, on both sides. That's a part of our culture. Uh, a key word, trust. Thank you. Next question this evening comes from the Detroit Free Press. We have Orion Sang. Orion? Hey, Juwan. Uh, Florida State switches a lot of screens, which I feel like is, is something that you guys didn't see all that often in the Big Ten. What, what did you make of your team's ability to handle that tonight on offense? I didn't hear the first part of your question. Can you repeat it? F Florida State switches a lot of screens. What, what did you make of your team's ability to handle that offensively? Screens? What? Repeat that? I, I don't understand what you said. Florida yeah. State switches a lot of screens. Oh, switches. Okay, I didn't hear that yeah. word, switches. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, they do. Um, but we've seen some of that in the Big Ten. Uh, you know, Rutgers switch, you know, ball screens. Uh, Maryland switch. 
they do a lot of switching. Uh, but, you know, in the tournament, we have also saw it versus LSU. Uh, they do a lot of switching. Uh, but, yes, it's, it's challenging when you have, you know, a team that have length, um, that also can switch one through five. But our guys did a great job of handling it. We practiced it all week, uh, and it was great to see the, you know, the, how they applied it on the floor. All right, next up, we have Ethan Sears with umhoops.com. Ethan, if you could please unmute and ask your question. Uh, yeah, Duan, uh, I'm wondering just uh, defensively, what did you uh, try to stress to everybody uh, coming in? How did you think uh, the team executed? You said defensively or offensively? Uh, defense. Our defense has been one of our staples of our identity as, as far as on the offensive end. Uh, we've had habits on how we've, you know, developed it uh, last year when I first arrived. And then, you know, when we returned to uh, the campus in June, uh, first thing that we met as a staff, and then also the first meeting when we were able to have our first uh, official practice, uh, we talked about how we want to be a better defensive team. And um, a lot of the drills that we worked on was based on developing that defensive prowess uh, where we can, of course, be disruptive on, bo on the uh, ball and then off the ball. So um, if you look at you know, the, the field goal percentage, yes, we held them to 40% uh, from the field and also held them to 25% from the free throw line. Uh, it was great defensive effort. Next, we have... Connor Brennan. Connor, if you could please identify your affiliation for coach and unmute. Thank you. Uh, Connor Brennan, the Michigan Daily. Um, yeah, Juwan, a lot was made about Florida State's size coming into this matchup. So how were you guys able to kind of neutralize them um, in terms of, you know, banging down low in the post? Yeah, uh, yeah, we heard it all week. Yep, sure did. And uh, we did a really good job of preparing for it. Um, yes, you cannot duplicate it in practice because you just don't have that, you know, uh, Florida State uh, roster. But um, it was great just to know, you know, as far as our guys buying into, and as the guys I'm speaking of, our scout team, are uh, really uh, watching film and studying uh, Florida State's offense and the players' uh, strengths. And when it came to preparation, uh, I was just so proud how the scout team really bought into preparing us. Next, we have John Borton. John, if you could please unmute and identify your affiliation for Coach. Thank you. Coach John Borton, uh, the Wolverine Magazine. Eight teams left after tonight. Was uh, there more celebrating going on or more, hey, we're not done yet in the locker room? One game at a time. You know, yes, we, we can celebrate tonight, uh, but tomorrow – uh, we're looking forward to our, our and preparing for our next opponent. All right, our next question is Chuck Culpepper. Chuck, if you could identify your affiliation for coach and ask your question. Yeah, Coach Howard, this is Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Um, through the years, now and then, we've seen teams that had great seasons, but a big blow near the end of it, like the one you took. Could you describe what it is like to try to adapt to that when there's not much time left to adapt? Uh, what blow are you speaking of? The injury. Isaiah. Well, uh, we don't make excuses here at Michigan. Uh, we feel so sorry for Isaiah uh, with the injury. Uh, during any time of the season when a player go down with an injury, um, you know, it, it's very unfortunate, and you feel and your heart breaks for that, that player. Um, Isaiah, all the hard work he's put in uh, senior year and, you know, get to a point where at the end of the season, injuries you cannot control. But uh, our guys uh, band together like brothers, be there for their brother to lift them up and keep his spirits. And he's been amazing on the sideline as far as with his energy and keeping guys engaged and see, being another coach out there for us. But it's great to see that other guys have, you know, stepped up. And uh, it's been collectively as a group. There are guys that have uh, stepped up uh, with his absence. Next, we have Myron Metcalf. Myron, if you could unmute and identify your affiliation. Uh, ESPN, uh, Jawan, just confirming. Isaiah's out for the rest of the tournament. Is that accurate? Uh, he's out indefinitely. So there's a chance he can return, or is he out? He's out indefinitely. Our next question is Steve Karnacki. Steve, if you could identify your affiliation. 
Yes, Steve Kornacki of the Kornacki Wolverine Report. Jawan, your team got a lot of good shots in this game, and, and a lot of it was ball movement, but some of it was that ability to, for your players to attack and yet to be patient and adjust to double teams and, and, and such. Could you could you talk about that aspect of your team's play today? Our guards, are very, not just the guards, but our team in general uh, did, played a very smart, aggressive game, um, just like how we prepared in practice. And uh, it's great that we had a we were able to apply it in the game situation because it's tough no matter in practice on how you try to prepare for it. You know, um, you're hoping and praying that, um, that there is, you know, a, a, a transfer to the floor, but it was. And the part of just taking your time and taking advantage of what the defense gives you. Just two more questions. Two more questions, Coach. First, we'll turn to John Titel with Hoops HD. John. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Um, I don't think I've seen a team in this tournament happier than when Jay's had the and one play at the end. What does it mean to you either as a father or a coach when that happens? Well, it's our culture, man. Our guys do an amazing job of enjoying each other's success because there's a brotherhood that's, you know, special. And, you know, it's not just a word when you talk about family and brotherhood. Those guys really believe it and buy into it because that's the care and love that they have for each other. So whether it was Jace or if it was Zeb Jackson who got the M1, you will see the same exact excitement you know, that they will display for their brother. Um, and it's not been the first time uh, that our guys have been excited for guys that comes in the game and able to have an impact on the game. You know, uh, if you watch this all year, you know, our bench brings that energy and they also cheer for one another. As a father, you know, it was beautiful to witness it uh, because I see the hard work he's put in and he deserved to be here and his teammates, you know, has really embraced them and he's embraced them. So it, it was, it was, it also put a big smile on my face just to see that he made the free throw. <laughs> All right, our last question for you, coach, this evening comes from Justin Rose. Justin, if you could please identify your affiliation. Yeah. Come on, Justin Rose, WXYZ here in Detroit. Uh, you know, Michigan's been to four Elite Eights now. What does it mean to you personally to continue the tradition of success with the basketball program getting to yet another Elite Eight? Well, I, as a player, I've been to three Elite Eights. So, uh, you know, Michigan has had a lot of success uh, in the basketball program. It's just beautiful to see that uh, all the hard work is paying off this year. Thanks, Coach Jawan Howard. Welcome to the Elite Eight again. Thank you. That's it for this post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at NCAA.com backslash transcript. You'll also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. That's it from Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Okay, this, once again, this is the press conference for Florida State University. We have head coach Leonard Hamilton. Uh, we will start with an opening statement from coach, and then after that, we will go to questions from the media. Media members, if you have a question for coach, please use the raise hand function to indicate you have the question. When you are called upon, please give your name and your affiliation. Please understand that coach cannot see you, so please give name and affiliation. But coach, if we can start with you with an opening statement. Uh, Huge congratulations to the University of Michigan and Coach Jawan Howard. I thought they did an excellent job in their preparation and their execution. You know, many times when you watch teams, you know, on film, you, you feel like you have a pretty good idea of uh, their strengths and their weaknesses. And uh, many times this year, people have, have looked at us in a similar fashion, and once they got on the court, our system sometimes uh, is not quite what people think that it is. And this is the case here. This team executed the ball, shoot, they executed so well. Their spacing was, was unbelievable. They were extremely patient. We had a hard time turning them over. Uh, they, uh, they, they really, really played off of their big guy. We spent so much time 
trying to uh, defend uh, Hunter, and uh, they get to their perimeter shooters that the, when the clock would run down to four, with about 10 seconds left on the shot clock, they continue to keep staying in their in their system and they execute and make plays right there toward the end. That's what a good team will do. That, there's no doubt that uh, this team is, from an execution standpoint, from a decision staking standpoint, they are playing to who they are. Uh, I said prior to the game that the team that would win this game would be the team who was the best version of who they were. And I think they were the best version of Michigan tonight. And uh, even though I thought we could have played a little better, I'm not real sure that uh, Michigan didn't have a lot to do with um, with our inability uh, to to play as well as, as we have had as we have played sometime during the course of the year. Uh, Tants off to the little Smith. I mean, he's you can, it's hard to rattle. Uh, I, I, I thought that the two things that we thought would be the biggest challenge for us would be to uh, because we switched one through five is to keep the ball away from Hunter, and we worked our friends off, but. Uh, we never really seemed to uh, – that, that we worked so hard in trying to defend him and Smith. I thought it opened up opportunities for other guys to get those dive cuts. Hats off to an excellent team. And this team, play, if they play the way they played tonight, they're going to be hard to beat. All right, we'll take questions. Once again, please use the raise hand function if you have a question for Coach. We're going to start with uh, Kurt Weiler. I hope I got that last name right. Kurt, go ahead. Hey, Kurt Weiler with the Tallahassee Democrat. Coach, uh, it seemed like you defended at least well enough to give you a chance in the second half, and then they were seemed unstoppable in the in the, in the the first half. And then the second half, they were pretty unstoppable, I guess. Was that an adjustment they made? Was that a lack of execution from the defense? Well, the first half, we, we both shot 30. We were 11 for 13, 33 from the floor, and they were 10 for 30. We both shot 33.3% from the floor. Uh, I think our Achilles was that uh, we were 0 for 7 uh, from, the, from the three, which is – you know, we, we had a couple of games in that we have shot the ball poorly and that we turned the ball over, uh, I think, 10 times in the first half and uh, they scored the 16 points off our turnovers. I mean, so uh, I thought that they they defended us and we defended them. We couldn't get to the free throw line and, and they got to the free throw line because we were overly aggressive. The second half, I thought that they did a much job, better job executing and got some higher percentage shots. And I, and I thought that the second half, we didn't get uh, we didn't we shot um, forty six percent the second half, which was not horrible, uh, but uh, obviously their execution uh, gave them a lot higher percentage shots than we did. Plus, uh, we shot uh, for the game. We, we I think we shot um, six free throws and they shot twenty three. They were much more aggressive in terms of executing, uh, getting the offensive rebounds and putbacks, and uh, driving to the basket and spacing the floor. I thought we, we fouled them a little too much, and we didn't get the same type of aggressiveness on our offensive end, and their lives are lost to a very good basketball team. Our next question will come from Mike Bianchi. Mike, go ahead. Yeah, Coach Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Obviously, um, you know, you made the run to the Sweet 16. How, what did you say to your team afterwards about finishing this very trying season and really a trying two-year stretch when you look at what happened at the end of last year and now this season with all the, the COVID? Well, I told them that you know, I knew how bad they felt after going out and losing to a very good team that played as well as Michigan did. But the, we, they can't let that one game define their season. You know, we were one game short from winning the regular season. We were one game short from winning the, the, the uh, conference tournament. And, and we came up short, and we made through the six, Sweet 16, and, and uh, we got beat by a team that played better than us. In reality, we have a you, you feel bad now because you didn't perform well enough against a, a real good basketball team, but we have a lot to be proud of. I mean, we, we've made tremendous progress with our program, and what we have to do is evaluate, you know, where we are, eva look at our, evaluate our shortcomings, and let's go back now as a group and let's improve on these on the, on our shortcomings and let's see can we come back and and be a little bit better than the Sweet 16 uh, next year. Our next question will come from Austin Reynolds. Austin, go ahead. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Austin Reynolds from the FSVU. Obviously, Raekwon Gray picked up the the two early fouls in that game in the first half. 
Uh, was there any thought to putting him in, even for just a couple of minutes towards the end of the first half? Because the offense seemed pretty much out of sorts without him. Well, um, you know, we normally have been okay. Uh, we were down, what, 10, 11 at halftime. That wasn't something that um, – uh, we were over, really, you know, we've come back from de uh, depth uh, being down like that. But uh, putting him back in for two two minutes to get a third foul, um, I'm not really sure that would have been the wise thing in relation to this particular team. Uh, we There are certain guys that we need on the floor. Uh, and there are certain guys that really make the difference in how well we play. And uh, Raquan has developed to be one of those guys that, Seem to settle us down when we need it. He's a very integral part of um, of of who, of who we are. Uh, but I'm not real sure him not playing a couple of minutes more in the first half would have made the difference in the game. Our next question uh, comes from Corey Clark. Corey, go ahead. Leonard, you talked about maybe your aggressiveness versus theirs. It did seem like MJ attacked the rim quite a bit. It wasn't like you were settling for jump shots. I guess not to put, get you in trouble commenting on the officiating, but what did they do <laughs> defensively to, to not get called for fouls that you guys did get called for fouls? Well, um, it's very unusual that a game of this magnitude and both teams being as aggressive as they were, but – Sometimes that's just uh, the way that the cookie crumbles. Um, we went to the foul line six times, and and uh, you got to give them credit, though. I thought their execution was really, really good. And uh, if I did underestimate one thing, the, you know, they were really big, strong, wide-body guys who really did a very good job of playing to themselves and within themselves. And they executed a lot better than we did, and they put themselves in positions where they could get fouled. You know, obviously I'm, I'm concerned about it, but not to the point where anything other than uh, sometimes that's just the way the game goes. I thought they were aggressive, and I thought we were too. Uh, uh, in the first half, the thing that I was most concerned about, I think we had about five point blank layups that we just didn't finish. And we got the shots that we wanted, but we just didn't. Even at the, the three-point shots that we got in the first half, I thought they were pretty good shots. Uh, th this one of those nights where we just didn't, couldn't seem to finish our basket uh, attempts at the basket, but you got to give them credit for being big and strong and contesting shots in there. And uh, I, I don't want to take away from uh, their defensive schemes that I thought caused us a little indecision and to be somewhat apprehensive and somewhat tentative when we went to the basket. And you guys who've seen us play all year know that we normally finish pretty well around the basket. We've been one of the better field goal percentage shooting teams in our, in our league and in the country. Our next question comes from John Romano. John, go ahead. Leonard, I know you said that you you told the players not to let this one game define your season. I'm curious how you will look back on this season. Did this team get everything that it should out of its talents? Well, and sometimes I thought maybe we might have overachieved at times. You know, uh, we uh, we have some strengths and we have some weaknesses, and I've been very proud of this team that they they've hung together and and they've played within themselves. You know, every team goes through periods where they have issues. And we had a, you know, I'm proud of this, these guys to go through the entire season without having anyone uh, have a, a COVID issue uh, to, um, but, and then, but even though we had two long pauses, you know, to be able to bounce back without a whole lot of practices and, and um, uh, be able to come back and be somewhat efficient uh, the, the, um, most teams always have a few of those nagging injuries. Uh, we had <laughs> seemed like they all came in bunches, and uh, where we had maybe about a three, two or three week period where guys only played in games and didn't really practice. So I look back at the season. You know, I, I think that th this team got a lot to be proud of, uh, and we'll 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 take this and we'll move forward. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, we still got a, a, a lot more areas where we can improve in and hopefully you'll see that as we continue to keep moving our program forward our next question comes from steve mcgargy i think it's mcgargy go ahead steve good job in the pronunciation this is steve mcgargy from the associated press 
I was just wondering, the ACC is now out of the tournament. It's the first time in a while there's been no ACC teams in the final eight. I was just wondering, from your perspective, what do you think was the difference in the conference this year that maybe it wasn't, if you didn't think it was quite as good, strong as years past? I, I think every conference goes through those periods where you just, you can't stay on top forever, you know, and our, our team is one of the um, most successful, rich, traditional conferences in the history of college basketball. And um, um, we made it to the Sweet 16, and we have some other teams emerging uh, that I think that uh, because of the rich tradition of some of our outstanding teams, they're kind of pulling some of us up and it kind of help accelerate our progress a little bit. And so I, I think there's a you, 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 what you're going to see is more teams end up being uh, at the highest level because of the success of the rich tradition of programs uh, that have, have been the marquee teams for our, for our conference over a number of years. Um, it, it, it works that way. It comes in rotations, and, and I feel like maybe we had a year where this year uh, maybe we're not having someone in the Elite Eight, uh, but uh, I think most people with, with, with most rational reason are thinking people that they know this is not going to be the issue moving forward. We're going to take one last question. We're going to take it from Zachary Braziller. Zach, go ahead. Um, Leonard, there's kind of been this narrative in the sport that it's, you know, uh, going to be a Gonzaga Baylor national championship game. Can Michigan beat those teams? <laughs> I mean, what you saw today? Well, I would say this if Michigan plays as well as they played today in terms of their focus and their execution and their spacing and the, the, the way they were connected today, I mean, they were, they, they were almost flawless in uh, their execution. And uh, I was—I mean, I was extremely impressed with how ready they were to play. They didn't—they maintained their composure, um, and uh, from start to finish, they never deviated. And uh, they had that stretch there where I think we might have cut it to four or five there in the second half, but they—they they continued to, to keep executing. And um, there were about three or four possessions there where I thought we defended them by as well as they can be defended. And I thought we were having a, a good possession. And then, and then they would have a guy, one of our players would turn their head and they would make a dive cut and finish a, a basket there uh, after we had spent a lot of energy defending them for part of the shot clock. So that's a team that really, really knows who they are. They know how to play to each other. And um, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me at all uh, for them to be standing there on, on – on Monday night with their finger up saying they're number one, number one. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Thanks very much. <laughs> we will have senior MJ Walker in a few minutes. Once again, uh, when, when MJ shows up and arrives, we will ask you to use the raise hand function in order to get your question in the queue. When called upon, please give your name and your affiliation. A reminder that MJ cannot see you, so please give name and affiliation before asking your question. Once again, we'll have senior MJ Walker in a minute or so. Okay, we have senior MJ Walker. Uh, again, if you have a question for MJ, please use the raise hand function. And when called upon, please give your name and affiliation. MJ cannot see you, so please give name and affiliation when called upon. We're gonna start with Chris Nee. Chris, go ahead. Hey, I'm Jay Chris Nee with Knowles247.com. Just wanted to ask you, I know it's immediate, but uh, losing this game, career being over at FSU, What's kind of the first thing that comes to your mind when you think back at your time at FSU, what you guys accomplished and where this program stands as you're exiting stage left? Um, I mean, I feel like I 
contributed to a, a lot of great teams and a lot of progress here at Florida State. I mean, um, the growth that I've seen since my freshman year all the way up till now um, has been, you know, tremendous. The way that you know our, the, our coaches and players have been locked in, and um, everyone's spirit is just in the right place to continue to uh, get better. And um, you know, I just I'm just glad I can be a part of something special. Um, the way that we did it, and you know, uh, all the great players that I played with, all the um, you know the coaching staff, and you know the fans, everything was just uh, it was a great experience being here at Florida State, and uh, you know it's, it's sad it had to be uh, this way, but I mean I feel like you know even with all the adversity throughout this season, um, you know we still put ourselves in the best position possible, uh, you know to be successful. Um, it wasn't anything we wanted, but. Um, I feel like we just left it all out there and try to do the best we can to make a uh, no nation proud. So, our next question comes from Corey Clark. Corey, go ahead. Yeah, MJ, kind of on those same lines. Um, I assume you think this program is is built for the long haul. Like you're leaving, Scotty might be leaving. Who knows who else? But do you think Leonard, what you guys have done and what Leonard has built? Has has built this program for the long haul. Will there be plenty of more Sweet Sixteens in the future, and maybe Elite Eights and Final Fours? Oh, uh, definitely. I mean, I feel like, um, I mean, our culture is just in the right place, um, and I think that's what's going to carry this program um, over into that uh, that blue blood era um, that, that's coming soon. I mean, I feel like uh, we're doing everything the right way, and you know, when you do that for so long, you know, good things are going to start to come in. Uh, we've been putting ourselves in position, you know, I mean, every year contending for a national championship. So, I mean, you know, I think Coach Ham uh, is definitely – Coach Ham and the staff, uh, they're doing a great job, um, you know, putting putting us in the right position and continue to build this culture the right way and um, taking this program to the next level. And it's, uh, I, I think it's only going to go up from here. Um, when I leave, I definitely, um, you know, will be looking back and just, you know, uh, wishing the best, you know, and, and just want to see the progression continue to build um, as I leave. So, um, you know, it's it's kind of one of them things. I just I'm, I'm appreciative. I'm sad, but at the same time, I'm just thankful and appreciative of, of the success we've had, and um, we're we're continuing to build um, through the next couple of years. You, you'll definitely see. I feel like a national championship is definitely on the way. So, okay, our next question comes from Carter Hill. Carter, go ahead. Yeah, MJ, uh, Carter Hill with fifth quarter. Congratulations on a great season. Just kind of piggy piggybacking off of some of those last ones. Is there a certain memory that stands out to you at Florida State that really trumps everything else, whether on the court or off the court? Uh, I mean, it's not. It's a lot of things I can say. I mean, I think just the, it's really just the experience. Honestly, I mean, I wouldn't trade it anywhere else. Just the growth that I've had as a person on and off the floor. Um, it's been helped me in my life tremendously from the coaching staff and to all the way to the players. So, I mean, it's, it's, I want to say it's a moment that sticks out the most, but I mean, every moment has definitely made me uh, to who I am today and um, helped me going forward in life. So, Our next question comes from Christopher Heidel. Christopher, go ahead. Hey, I'm Jay Chris Heidel from Hermiton Radio in Baltimore. Um, just, I know you guys, you just just talk about your four years there at Florida State. Are you considering maybe come back for an extra year? Because I know everybody has that extra option now because of what happened with COVID. Um, I'm definitely going to discuss that with my coaches and uh, we'll definitely uh, make that decision. Um, get back to Tallahassee, so yeah. Okay, our next question comes from uh, Gene Frenette. Gene, go ahead. Uh, can you hear me, MJ? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you guys went through three separate scoring droughts of four minutes in the first half. Uh, did did you uh, did you get a feeling as 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 the first half was progressing that you guys were just uh, out of sorts and you were just having uh, a lot of difficulty trying to find any kind of groove at all? Um, I mean, we kind of been struggling shooting uh, in March Madness. For the majority of the part, we haven't been shooting how we have kind of during the regular season. Um, you know, I think that uh, Michigan did a good job with their game plan, executed it defensively and offensively. 
Um, you know, we, the ball just wasn't, you know, going our way today. Um, I think that uh, we were still trying our best to execute our game plan. Uh, sometimes the ball doesn't uh, go the way you want, and turnovers kind of help, uh, didn't help us as much, and um, we weren't uh, rebounding the ball as well. So um, not, a, not a lot of positives overpowering the negatives, and I think that that's kind of what hurt us. Um, but, uh, I mean, we, we're a defensive-type program, and – uh, we didn't do a great job defensively as well, um, trying to get um, stops, you know, throughout the whole game and didn't control the run. So um, that's just something that uh, we got to learn from going for, going forward and uh, it will definitely make us better. Okay, our next question comes from Benjamin Meyerson. Benjamin, go ahead. Hey, MJ, it's Ben Meyerson from the FSVU in Florida Flambeau. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about how different this year was, you, you know, with everything going on in the world and just the on and off stop and with how different the tournament was. What kind of experience was this and how will you remember it? Uh, it was, it's definitely been the toughest year. Uh, with being my four years here at Florida State, um, just from the way it started, I mean, it wasn't, it was nowhere near the typical year um, that I've had here at Florida State. I mean, we didn't start training until pretty much the beginning of October, late September. And, you know, the summer is usually a big, big, big part of our program and how we develop players. And, um, you know, we tried to do what we could. Um, and I'm sure other teams across, pretty much every team across the country, um, whether it was men's sports, women's sports, um, you know, it was it, it was tough. It was definitely one of those things you had to try to figure out and kind of just playing it by ear and continue to adjust. Um, but it was tough. I feel like we didn't. One thing I'm proud of is our team and, and um, program. I mean, we didn't we didn't make any excuses. You know what I mean for you know COVID and what life is throwing at us. We found a way to continue to press through and uh, found a way to you know continue to figure out ways to get better, uh, stay connected the best way we could. Um, and, you know, it, it was tough. I mean, not having a gym for over three to four months, really count, count to five. I mean, it, with on top of limited time in the gym throughout the whole entire season on to, and treatment. So it, it, it's kind of one of those things you got to continue to adjust and, you know, just take it for what it is and do it the best with what you got. That's all you can ask for. And I feel like we did that as a, as a program. Uh, just try to give it as much as we can, and um, you know we just roll with the punches. So uh, it was definitely one of the toughest year, years I've had here at Florida State mentally. We got time for one more question. We're going to go back to Corey Clark. Uh, Corey, go ahead. Yeah, MJ, you mentioned it, kind of the shooting struggles there at the end of the year. Is there anything you could put your finger on? You guys were so good offensively for so long, and it just seemed like the last, I don't know, five or six games, including this one, you just guys would, would have struggles offensively. Was it, I mean, well, I don't know. Can you put your finger on what, what you think happened there? Um, I mean, honestly, I think it was a, mo a lot of uh, um, our defense affecting our offense. Um, a lot of times when we were in shooting slumps, we kind of, uh, take our focus a little bit off defensively, which creates runs for the other team. And, um, you know, we kind of let, you know, runs affect our offense, you know, our defense affect our offense by uh, either getting rush shots and not getting the shots that we uh, necessarily want. Um, you know, I can't really put my finger on, you know, why we shot um, not as well as we have during the whole season. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things you just got to, Kind of, we try to depend on our defense, honestly, uh, to carry us. And you know, you kind of I mean you need both. Um, if you're trying to win a national championship, um, you know, if you're if you're going to continue to, uh, you know, um, get to that next level. But I mean, honestly, I mean, we didn't do both today. I mean, defensively, we weren't that great, and um, we didn't take care of the ball as well as we we need to. And on top of that, we weren't shooting the ball well. So, um, you know, it's just something we got to learn from and. Um, just figure out ways to keep that consistency uh, later in the season um, as a program and uh, offensively and defensively, you know, so um, I can't really, it's not something I can really put my finger on. MJ, we appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. Thank you.
Okay, everyone, that's it for this post-game news conference. Uh, transcript of Coach Hamilton's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports at www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. Once again, that's www.ncaa.com slash transcripts. You can also find a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com. That's www.ncaa.veritone, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E.com. Thanks everyone for joining us and have a good night.